what is the downside to just doing one set to all out failure? Um, well, so probably, you know, the first would be, are, is the individual actually capable of producing that amount of intensity in a given set? Right. So we have, you know, this thing called neurological intensity or neurological and learn neurological efficiency, which is like, how good is your body at recruiting as many muscle fibers at a single time as it can? That's a, that's like a learned thing. Your nervous system has to learn how to do that. So a very novice person who's, you know, never really picked up a weight in their life, isn't going to be able to recruit the same number of muscle fibers in a single contraction as someone like Mike Menser or an advanced trainee or a, an athlete who's been doing this for years and their nervous system has you know, prepared themselves to do this. So it may not be physiologically possible to get the same level of recruitment. Mm -hmm. The caveat to that is a newer person or a beginner doesn't need as much stimulus to get growth. Right. So there's, there's caveat, there's like both sides to all of this the whole way through. Um, that would, I say, I, that, I think that's kind of the main one is like, are you capable of doing that? Mm -hmm. And neurological intensity is basically like the skill of a movement, right? Your body learns how to do it more efficiently over time. Yeah. So neurological coordination. So neurological coordination would be your body's ability to perform the movement efficiently, meaning use as little effort as possible by coordinating all the tissues. Neurological intensity being what's the maximum amount of tissue recruitment you can get in a given, in a given instant. Okay. Very interesting. So let's take the, the Mike Menser example. And, you know, he's going for this one set to all out failure and he's capable of, he has the neurological intensity and the neurological coordination to recruit his muscles and make this set worthwhile. What mm -hmm. is the downside to just doing something like that? Or I guess when does it become not enough is the question. Right. Well, I mean, that's going to, that's where the, the N of one really comes in. Right. So even when you look at, you know, studies comparing different volumes, intensities, and that kind of stuff, everyone doesn't lie on the average. Mm -hmm. It's an average because you have outliers on either end. So you might have someone, you know, perhaps like Mike Menser, who maybe he was a hyper responder. He didn't, he could respond more than the average person to the same amount of stimulus, let's say. So that's not going to be everyone. Mm -hmm. So that's the downside. If you're not that hyper responder, that probably won't work as well for you. You might need more volume or more rest or, you know, multiple days per week or whatever the case may be. So that's where, you know, the individualization of these things becomes very important and just realizing not everyone is a top 0.01% bodybuilder. 